Hello students, welcome to my lecture on microemulsions. A large number of existing drugs as well as new chemical entities that have been recently discovered exhibit poor solubilization behavior leading to poor oral bioavailability. And this has important clinical implications as both pharmacological and toxic effects are proportional to dose as well as bioavailability. Several approaches have been explored to improve the bioavailability of such drugs, including particle size reduction, complexation, salt formation, solubilization, use of coarse solvents, surfactants, etc. However, most of these approaches have met with limited success. Another approach that has been widely studied for enhancing the bioavailability of poorly soluble drugs is that of microemulsions. Microemulsions offer a cost effective approach in such cases. Microemulsions have low surface tension and small droplet size resulting in high absorption and permeation. There is a large a degree of interest in these versatile carriers and their applications have been used for administering the drug by several routes other than the conventional oral route. This is attributed to their unique solubilization properties as well as thermodynamic stability and hence they have been considered as novel vehicles for drug delivery. In today's lecture, we are going to learn more about this interesting topic of microemulsion. The diagram that is shown on my title slide is a comparative analysis of the size of the microemulsion droplet with that of our conventional or macro emulsion droplet. As you can see, the micro emulsion droplet is smaller than the macro emulsion droplet as well as the nano emulsion droplet. By definition, micro emulsions are clear, stable, transparent, thermodynamically stable mixtures of oil and water that have been stabilized by the use of emulsifiers which involves both surfactants as well as co-surfactants. They have significantly different properties as related to nano emulsions and micro emulsions. Let us first look at the advantages of such micro emulsion based carrier systems for delivery of drugs to the body. Micro emulsions exhibit several advantages. Firstly, they are thermodynamically stable systems and they undergo self-emulsification. More details about this we will uh, look into as we go ahead. Microemulsions act as super solvents for drugs. They may be of two types, the oil in water type and the water in oil type. And they, therefore, they can solubilize both hydrophilic and lipophilic drugs including those drugs that are relatively insoluble in both phases. The dispersed phase can act as a potential reservoir of the hydrophilic drug or the lipophilic drug respectively. Drugs are released with the pseudo zero order kinetics depending upon the volume of the dispersed phase, the partition coefficient of the drug and the transport of rate of the drug. It has been reported that the mean diameter of the droplets in the micro emulsions is below 0.22 millimeters. So the small size of the droplet that is below 100 nanometers which is seen very frequently yields a very large interfacial area from where the drug is released rapidly into the external phase or the GI fluid where, where absorption takes place. Thus, it maintains the concentration in the external phase constant over a long period of time and as close to initial levels as possible. 
some micro emulsions have the ability to carry both lipophilic as well as hydrophilic drugs at the same time and therefore can be used to administer combination of drugs both lipophilic and hydrophilic. Due to the thermodynamic stability of the micro emulsions, they are easy to prepare and require no significant energy contribution during preparation. Therefore, energy is not required in the manufacturing process. These micro emulsions have lower viscosity as compared to primary and multiple emulsions and are therefore easier to administer, easier to dispense. The use of micro emulsion as delivery systems improves the efficacy of the drug and allows the total dose to be reduced, thereby the side effects are minimized. The formation of micro emulsion is reversible and they become unstable at higher or lower temperatures. However, when the temperature returns to the stability range, the micro emulsion is reformed. Thus, there are several advantages to design of microemulsions and their use as carriers for drugs. What are the disadvantages of such microemulsion based systems? Let us look at these. Large concentration of the surfactant and co-surfactant is necessary for stabilization of this emulsion. Limited solubilizing capacity for high melting substances limits their use. The surfactant as well as the co-surfactant used should be non-toxic as they are used in very high concentration. The stability of this micro emulsion is influenced by temperature and pH. Drastic changes in temperature can lead to destabilization of the microemulsion. However, microemulsion is reformed when the temperature is in the stability range. Changes in the pH may adversely affect the stability of the microemulsion. There are several limitations for use of microemulsions in pharmaceutical applications. But let us see what these are. First and foremost is the need for using pharmaceutically acceptable ingredients that are having grass status that is generally recognized as safe. Therefore, the oil surfactants and co-surfactants need to be selected with great care. Concentration of surfactants and co-surfactants must be low in order to avoid, avoid toxicity. Phase separation may be seen if the manufacturing conditions are not ideal. For intravenous use, the demands for less toxicity are rigorous and extensive studies need to be carried out. But so far, very few studies on the toxicity of microemulsions for parental use have been reported. As we can see, based on the above points, the major limitation is the toxicity of the excipients, mainly the surf combination of surfactant and co-surfactants. Therefore, there is a need to explore the safety of the excipients and prepare a list of safe uh, surfactants and co-surfactants who do not, which do not manifest toxicity. Therefore, available literature should be scanned thoroughly and more literature and data should be generated in order to understand the complexities that arise from the use of newer surfactants and co-surfactants. Thus, overall, the limitation here is the use of appropriate surfactants and co-surfactants, which not only fulfill the criteria of meeting the physical characteristics, providing and form a formulation that is stable, thermodynamically stable, at the same time elicits no toxicity when ingested on a long-term basis. So far, what you have learnt in theory is the conventional emulsion, but what we are studying today is a totally different concept, that of a micro emulsion. So, let us first look at the differences between the conventional emulsion and the micro emulsion. If you have seen any marketed emulsion, you will see that it is opaque, it is cloudy in appearance. However, the micro emulsion by virtue of the small size of the dispersed phase or the internal space appears to be transparent to the naked eye. 
the micro emulsion the surface tension at the uh, interface between the globules and the external phase is very low because of the use of high concentration of surfactants as well as surfactants against as against that the interfacial tension in case of the conventional emulsion is higher the micro emulsion is considered to be an isotropic system whereas the conventional emulsion is considered to be an anisotropic system the structure of the micro emulsion is dynamic and you will see changes and occurring in the size of the globules and the orientation of the globules in case of micro emulsion whereas in case of the conventional emulsion the globule structure is static droplet sizes vary vastly and are in the range of 3 to 50 nanometers in case of micro emulsion whereas in case of conventional emulsion the size is in the range of 1 to 100 microns because of their structure and their formation it is found that micro emulsions are thermodynamically stable and at the given temperature range and they have a longer shelf life as compared to the conventional emulsions which are kinetically stable but thermodynamically unstable for all practical purposes micro emulsions are considered to be a monophasic system while the conventional emulsion is a biphasic system with the same amount of viscosity uh, with the same amount of oily phase the viscosity of micro emulsions is much lower than that of conventional emulsions and because no energy requirement is there for uh, manufacture of micro emulsions the cost of commercial production works out to be relatively lower as compared to the cost of manufacture of conventional emulsions thus overall we can see that there are several advantages to the use of micro emulsions as formula as carrier vehicles for drugs exhibiting poor solubility or other bioavailability problems we will now look at the different types of micro emulsions based on the phase equilibria that is obtained Winsor in 1948 identified four types of micro emulsions according to him type 1 micro emulsion is biphasic which has an upper excess oil phase and a lower micro emulsion phase. Type 2 is again biphasic with an upper micro emulsion phase and a lower excess water phase. Type 3 is triphasic where there are three phases upper excess oil phase, middle uh, lower uh, excess water phase, and a micro emulsion at the center. And type 4 is a monophasic micro emulsion type of formulation. These four types have been shown again on the next slide in a uh, diagrammatic representation which makes it easier to understand. So I will move to the next slide and again explain to you what are the four different types of micro emulsions. Now listen here very carefully. Winsor has classified micro emulsions into four types. Type 1 is biphasic where there is an upper oil rich phase and a lower micro emulsion phase. Type 2 has a lower aqueous rich phase and an upper micro emulsion phase. Type 3 is triphasic with micro emulsion at the center, oil rich phase at the top and the aqueous rich phase at the bottom. Whereas type 4 is the ideal micro emulsion where it is a monophasic system consisting of the tiny globules 1 to 100 nanometer of the dispersed phase in the dispersion phase. Let us now look at the structural aspects and the formulation aspects of a micro emulsion. Micro emulsions consist of the smallest drop size in all emulsion systems so in comparison to macro and nano emulsions these are the smallest with droplet size of the dispersed phase which ranging from 10 to 100 nanometer in diameter micro emulsion formation is a forward driven process that is it occurs spontaneously and in most of the cases the micro emulsions are formed without any energy input 
different types of internal phases are possible from the micellar phase the rod like internal phase laminar phase or the sponge like structure is all possible depending upon the type of the micro emulsion formed as well as the proportion of the surfactant co-surfactant the oil and the oil used Thermodynamically, the microemulsions are stable. That is, they do not undergo degrad uh, degradation and uh, breakdown. Their phases are not prone to separation over time, and many microemulsion formulations have been found to remain stable for many years under the appropriate storage conditions. Thus, microemulsion is a four-component system. prepared by emulsifying oil in an aqueous system with the help of surfactant and co-surfactant so the four main components of the microemulsion are the aqueous phase the oily phase the surfactant and the co-surfactant co-surfactants used are normally intermediate chain alcohol length alcohols such as pentanol or butanol what is the role of surfactants and co-surfactant as we know surfactant lowers the interfacial tension to very small values so depending on the microemulsion system to be formed whether it is oil in water or water in oil the appropriate surfactants are selected surfactants with low hlb value that is below 10 are suitable for preparation of water in oil microemulsion whereas high hlb value surfactants are suitable for manufacture of oil in water microemulsion because of the nature and the size of the globules and the thermodynamic aspects surfactants alone are not able to reduce the interfacial tension significantly hence co-surfactants are added and these play an important role by providing significant flexibility to the interfacial layer these integrate into the interfacial film that is in between the surfactants and the most common used co-surfactants are those molecules which have a small polar head and a suitable alkyne chain making it very convenient for insertion between the surfactant molecules at the interface between the oily phase and the aqueous phase So this is a diagrammatic representation of an oil in water micro emulsion where the globule has been demonstrated. So you have the continuous phase which is the aqueous phase and the globules which are which consist of the oily phase. If the yellow uh, if the yellow structure is a surfactant molecule and the green structure is a co-surfactant molecule you can see that at the interface the surfactant molecules are present with the polar heads oriented outside and the hydrophobic chain hydrophobic tail oriented inwards and in between the surfactant molecules you can see the co-surfactant molecules which have been inserted and whose role is to provide flexibility and shape to the dispersed phase so this is how a microemulsion would look under a my oil in water microemulsion would look under a microscope so you have the at the interfacial barrier the surfactant molecules and a small concentration of the co-surfactant molecules which are responsible for the thermodynamic stability of this system in the following table you will see examples of commonly used oils surfactants and co-surfactants that have been used for the manufacture of microemulsions the oils that are used generally are the vegetable oils which are safe uh, to be administered orally surfactants used are those that have already been used for a long time in uh, several oral formulation liquid formulations and the co-surfactants are also the commonly used excipients what are the routes by which microemulsions can be administered as i told you earlier the most commonly used route for administration of microemulsions is the oral route this is followed by the topical route of drug delivery it has been found that microemulsions when uh, when the you know, viscosity of microemulsions is increased by the addition of carbomers they give gels which have an internal dispersed phase containing the oily uh, oil soluble drug 
and these act as very good transdermal drug delivery systems therefore topical or dermal applications of microemulsions uh, several are such examples are found in literature microemulsions have also been preferred for parenteral drug delivery and there are several reports published on their utility as parenteral drug delivery vehicles to some extent they have also been used for intranasal applications as well as ocular applications and several other applications each point within the triangle represents a composition of mixture of these three components which may consist of one two or three phases these points combine to form regions with boundaries that represent the phase behavior of the system so as you can see the region depicted here at the bottom where the surfactant co-surfactant concentration is minimum is the region where conventional emulsion or macro emulsion is formed the regions the dark regions depicted here are representative of the formation of oil in water emulsion on the left or water in oil emulsion on the right so if the surfactant has low HLB value, then it is going to form a water in oil in micro emulsion in this region. And if the HLB value is higher, then in this region, at this ratio of the three components, the oil in water micro emulsion will be formed. The remaining uh, region between these three areas represents a biphasic structure where the micro emulsion exists in equilibrium with the oil rich phase or the aqueous rich phase or both. Therefore, it is very necessary to draw a phase diagram and carry out suitable experimentation by mixing the three components in the different ratios and determining the region in which micro emulsion would be formed. Having understood the significance of determining the ratios of the three components that are to be used for manufacture of a micro emulsion having the desired physicochemical characteristics, let us now move ahead with the actual method of manufacture. The method of manufacture is very simple and involves dissolving the drug in the phase that it is soluble in, that is either the oily phase or the aqueous phase. This is followed by addition of surfactant and co-surfactant and stirring until a transparent monophasic system is obtained. The amount of surfactant and co-surfactant or the ratio of surfactant to co-surfactant to be added as well as the percentage of the internal phase, in this case let us say oily phase, is determined with the help of a pseudo ternary phase diagram which we have seen in the previous slide. So once mixed and the system is transparent, finally ultrasonicator is used to achieve the desired size range for the dispersed globules. The system is then allowed to equilibrate. This method of manufacture is very simple and involves basic equipment and the same is depicted in the next slide here in the form of a diagrammatic representation. So you have the oily phase and the aqueous phase. The drug may be dissolved in whichever phase it is soluble or both the phases may consist of the uh, of different drugs. This is followed by addition of the surfactant co-surfactant system and simple stirring to give either a water in oil type of emulsion or oil in oil in water type of emulsion which is then homogenized and allowed to equilibrate. The microemulsion system so formed has to be characterized in order to understand its physicochemical properties as well as predict its behavior in vivo. For this purpose, the important tests that need to be carried out are determination of the droplet size, determination of viscosity, density, determination of turbidity, refractive index, extent of phase separation as well as pH. Droplet size can be measured by using the dynamic light scattering technique and the data is so, uh, so collected is processed and analyzed. Polydispersity poly also can be studied by using the AB refractometer and the phase, the type of micro emulsion can be determined by measuring the electrical conductivity. Measurement of viscosity is done by the conventional technique of by using Brookfield type rotary viscometer and the viscosity is measured at 37 degrees centigrade. Similarly, density, turbidity, refractive index can be measured by using the conventional techniques. 
The next type of uh, test that needs to be carried out is to understand the efficiency of the microemulsion in releasing the drug to the external environment and this can be done by carrying out in vitro permeabil uh, permeability studies and determining the partition coefficient of the drug. Any cell such as Kesari TN cell or Franz diffusion cell can be used for this study. For more details, you can refer to standard textbook. Whenever any new formulation is being developed, its efficiency, safety and, uh, and uh, toxicity are determined by carrying out in vivo studies that involve carrying out the bioavailability studies in, uh, ra in animals such as rats and also clinical studies. In case of if the drug is meant for topical application, then the topical in, in vivo topical studies can be carried out by applying the formulation onto the skin of the animal and determining the amount of drug that has penetrated into the systemic circulation. Pharmacological studies for studying the efficacy of the drug also need to be carried out and skin irritation potential of the formulation should be determined if the formulation is meant for topical use. In case of the formulation that is under development, it is very important to carry out the stability studies on the formulation and these can be carried out by using the ICH guidelines or other suitable guidelines. Lastly, we come to the various applications of microemulsions. As I told you, the major route of delivery of microemulsions is the oral route and the other important routes are the parenteral route as well as the topical route. To some extent, the microemulsions have been successful in delivering the drug to the ocular tissues as well as the pulmonary, pulmonary tissues. Also, biotechnological applications of microemulsions have been reported in the literature. For more details about the applications of microemulsions and how they have improved, greatly improved the bioavailability of formulations when given by any of these routes and for treatment of several such conditions, refer to the notes that I have provided in the Google Classroom. There are some other applications of the microemulsions that have been reported such as improving skin penetrability, transdermal, uh, improving transdermal permeation, they have also found uh, applications in enhanced uh, oil recovery, detergents, cosmetics, agrochemicals, foods, fuels, uh, microbiology, etc. In conclusion, I would like to state that microemulsions have been highly successful in protection of labile drugs, controlling drug delivery, increasing drug solubility, improving bioavailability and reducing patient variability. It has also been use, uh, used for formulating several preparations for several routes of applications. However, most of these studies and work done is at a fundamental stage and therefore much more uh, data is needed before these can live up to their potential as multi-purpose drug delivery vehicles. Thank you.